Thank you to Nintendo of America for the review code. Astral Chain is the latest in a long line of action games from storied developer Platinum Games. Platinum has developed many acclaimed titles over the years, and it's easy to see the influence of those games on their newest sibling. In many ways, Astral Chain feels like a follow-up to one of Platinum's most acclaimed games, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Revengeance hit the shelves in 2013 after a troubled development, and didn't have much time to fully realize all of its gameplay systems, but it ended up being released to critical acclaim and boasting a very nice moveset for its main character, Raiden. All of Raiden's techniques feel synergistically tuned to provide an exciting experience, with many of the game's set pieces making natural use of the game's innate mechanics. While it was a bit rushed, with uneven pacing, and over-reliant on spectacle, what it provided was a fun time. Mechanics such as Blade Mode and the Zandatsu of Metal Gear Rising return in Astral Chain. Unfortunately, despite backing by Nintendo, Astral Chain doesn't feel any more polished than its predecessor, and these systems do not feel like an integral part of the overall combat, but rather a crutch to make up for the lackluster ideas that this game brings to the table. I didn't have the best of times with Astral Chain. I have no personal vendetta against it or its developers, and I only want to be able to give my honest take on it, in the hopes that this feedback could help Platinum make a better, more focused game, and maybe make you, the viewer, think about some things. If you're here, and you like Astral Chain, and you just want me to reaffirm your views, sorry, this isn't the video for you. If you want to have an open, honest discussion, keep watching. Starting off, I want to take a little bit to talk about the intro to Astral Chain, which has to be one of the most misleading introductions to any video game I've ever played, as it makes it seem like a much worse game than it actually is. Starting in a cold open, the game puts you on the lowest difficulty by default, with the only way to up the difficulty being acquired after the first chapter. Adding to that, the player's amount of moves are cut in half until a story beat halfway through the second chapter, making the combat incredibly monotonous and repetitive. Many action games limit the abilities of the player at the beginning of the game, but I've never really seen one nerf its starting combo like this. Astral Chain takes incredibly long to get going as a game, and if you aren't wowed by cinematics and engaged in the experience, it takes over two hours to even approach what for most action games is accomplished in the first hour at most. This could have been lessened by having the difficulty selectable before the game begins, which I'm surprised isn't the case to begin with, and by having good feeling combat not be locked behind a story beat, but rather unlocked by player progression. There are already moves that are unlocked this way, so it's strange to me that Astral Chain opts for locking it behind a wall. Astral Chain's take on action game combat is definitely fun at times. Cathartic, even. But it's very oversimplistic and lacks the variety and fluidity needed to make a consistently exciting experience. Your player character only has three combos, each totaling six blows, one per weapon, for the entire duration of the game with the caveat being that there are five different techniques you can unlock to spice up the combos. The real meat to the combat system lies in the use of your legion, your otherworldly partner. You can send your legion out, put it near an enemy, and have it automatically attack, and you can even give it some direct orders as you unlock them. The unlockable commands for both your weapon and your legion share the same button inputs, which cuts down on memorization, but can make the game feel a bit stale, as you'll be constantly putting in the same inputs for every legion, and even your own attacks. The biggest twist of the game is that it limits your ability to do many conventional action game mechanics, like being able to even jump and use aerial attacks, requiring the use of your legion. The way you jump is, you have to send out your legion, hold the legion button, and then press your attack button. The way you use aerial attacks is that you have to target an enemy, send out your legion, hold the legion button, press your attack button, and then mash your attack button to do a single aerial combo. Having to rely on multi-button inputs to do something as simple as an aerial attack feels incredibly inelegant. The player makes a dead stop mid-air whenever they make contact with anything, which just doesn't feel right and kills the momentum. I understand this is necessary to allow for aerial combat, 
but this could be solved easily by having a separate jump button that maybe goes a shorter distance to allow for aerial attacks and better platforming, and having legion jumping be its own separate mechanic. Vertical combat could also be removed outright, which may improve the game substantially, as it would give a reason to use more of your legions during combat. The legions serve as your standard action game weapons, as you acquire them one by one, and they all serve their own purposes in combat and in environmental puzzles. You can activate each of their special abilities with the corresponding button. The Sword Legion is able to use MGR's Blade Mode. The Bow Legion can shoot arrows. The Arm Legion can hover slightly, carry enemies, and do JoJo moves. The Beast Legion can track objects, dig, and be ridden. And the Axe Legion has a force field and can lay bombs for some reason. These abilities play heavily into the level design of each area and are used extensively, including in set pieces at points of the game. However, aside from the Bow and Axe Legion's abilities, these aren't too useful for combat. The purpose of the Legion's mechanics is to help you feel more in sync with your partner, which is demonstrated in the game's central mechanic, suitably named Sync Moves. Essentially, during a combo or after a specific action, when your character's wrist flashes blue, the game pauses to prompt the player, and you can press the Legion button during that window to perform a combo attack. More sync moves are unlocked as you upgrade your legions, leading to frequent pauses in combat that can hamper the flow and momentum of gameplay. Sometimes these sync moves play out a scripted animation with a cinematic angle. It looks cool when it hits, but most of the time they miss because the enemy will move out of the way while the animation is playing. Sync moves can at times accomplish their goal of making you feel like you're moving in unison with your legion, but often they make you feel like you're handicapped by having a legion. Your moveset is split between you and your partner, with your character getting the short end of the stick. Due to most of your moveset being relegated to sync moves, the majority of your character's kit is context sensitive. So rather than moves being used as an expression of the player, they're more at the whim of the game. Where an action game character like the previously mentioned Raiden has a fully developed kit, your police officer has only the bare minimum on their own. The much more exciting combat moves are locked behind use of your legion, while your character has much more standard ones. It feels like the game is afraid to give the player more options, so they will use their legion more, but combat starts to break down when use of your legion is limited, such as during escort sections and when you run out of legion energy. I appreciate the game is trying to be something different and is highly experimental, but this system in particular could do with some revision. The inclusion of a larger variety of moves for the player, and perhaps being able to use your legion at all times, with only legion abilities needing to use energy, would have greatly benefited the game's combat system, maybe even allowing the player to more directly control legions and even issue them direct attack commands beyond abilities? Anything to improve the player's repertoire. Back at the beginning I said the combat lacked fluidity. Well, along with the sync attacks constantly pausing gameplay, Perhaps the biggest point of contention for the lack of fluidity is that the game is locked to only 30 frames per second, which for a fast action game can make or break the experience. The game can look gorgeous at times thanks to smart art direction, but the frame rate feels like it buckles under the intense stress of the graphics all the time, especially when played in handheld mode. While I didn't expect much from the Nintendo Switch given its technological capabilities, I still feel like this game would have been better if it could hit that sweet 60. Again, bringing up Metal Gear Rising, that game reaches 60 FPS on platforms far weaker than the Switch. And while it's not too graphically impressive, it makes up for that with incredibly fluid animation and character movement. The developers have said that they prioritized visuals over frame rate for Astral Chain, and I can't help but think that was the wrong call. Topping off the combat is the return of the Zendatsu, a mechanic ripped straight from Metal Gear Rising. In this game, it's just called a finisher, but its purpose, to regain all of your health and energy, is the same. When an enemy is close to death, you can press A to finish it off and play an animation, killing your enemy. Only in Astral Chain, it's far less satisfying, as the kill animation lacks energy. Worse still, many of these finishers wait on your character holding the chain motionless, until the screen flashes for you to do a sync attack. This is an absolute pace killer. Compare that to Metal Gear Rising, where you trigger this by hitting an enemy's weak point in blade mode. It can be done at any time, whether it be during regular combat or after a perfectly timed move. 
or during an exciting finisher, slicing your foe into a million pieces while flying through the air, and then grabbing the core and slamming down on the ground like a feral animal. You can even grab multiple cores at once. It, the, the point is, the Zendatsu incorporates much more elegantly into the gameplay of Rising than an Astral Chain. In many ways, this game feels like a continuation of Metal Gear Rising's gameplay systems without many of the things that made that game great, or any attempt to improve on them. To give Astral Chain credit, weapon switching and item usage is far better than in Metal Gear Rising, happening in real time or through a quick radio menu, but that feels like the only thing that was improved on. Zendatsu feels just as broken as it did in Metal Gear Rising, and as I said, far less dynamic. An attempt is made to have a similar level of spectacle, but it often fails to reach the same level of excitement, because that spectacle is at the whim of the game, rather than the player. Metal Gear Rising's core systems feel built around the spectacle, where Astral Chains don't. It even has stealth sections, which are the one thing most people are in agreement of as the worst part of the previous game. I'm sad to say they are also the worst part of the game here, being woefully underbaked even compared to Rising, and with the final stealth section even being mandatory. Thankfully, they're incredibly easy, but they don't work with the game's core mechanics, and don't feel like they belong. Astral Chain feels very much like it is unsure of what it wants to be, and often neglects its best qualities. Astral Chain is at its best when you're in the city doing detective things and solving small-scale crimes. These mechanics are never really given a chance to shine, though, due to them not being built on at all beyond the first big investigation. This aspect is also overshadowed by the fact that it feels like over half of the game is spent in the featureless, abstract cube rooms and hallways of the Astral Plane, not doing any police or detective work. I would not mind this if the combat were better, but it's not up to snuff to carry a whole game. There are only around six maps to make up Astral Chain's futuristic dystopian world, and the game is definitely stronger when you're in them. Each of these maps is filled with activities, quests, and NPCs that provide the game a bit more flavor. But the rest of the game is spent in this boring, banal, featureless void, and these levels start to blur together as the game goes on. To top it off, the soundtrack whenever you're here is always the same, adding to the repetition. The game was rather lengthy for an action title, with missions taking up to three hours to complete. This length on top of the repetition of the missions in the Astral Plane made the game feel like it moved along at a snail's pace. Overall, I clocked in 30 hours before I hit the end credits. It feels like I was in the Astral Plane for longer than that. Perhaps I would not be so miffed about the pacing if Astral Chain had a competent narrative, which it is severely lacking. Yes, I'm going to talk about the story for a little bit, and yes, there are spoilers here. So, I guess, skip to the timestamp on screen if you really want to avoid spoilers. Astral Chain self-identifies as a cyberpunk game, and that's a tall order to tackle already. Cyberpunk is the clash of high-tech futuristic elements against the low quality of life, and it's at its best when the work has a profound message about society, or even just anything to say at all. That's the foundation the genre was built on, but Astral Chain has nothing to say, and uses it mostly for its aesthetic. This wouldn't be a problem if the style was mere set dressing, but the game hammers in its story, and that story is unbelievably dry and self-serious. So much time is spent on this game's story, and it feels wasted. Genuine intrigue is neglected in favor of biblical symbolism. The setting the game takes place on is called The Ark, an artificial island created to protect the last living beings from an apocalyptic event. And the final boss is named... <sighs> It's really hard to take a story seriously when it uses the Bible as a crutch, not examining it in any meaningful way, with no real interesting concepts of its own. To top it all off, it literally ends with a character sacrificing themselves while assuming a pose as if nailed to a cross. It feels pretentious and unwarranted. Throwing in a Jesus parallel doesn't make up for a sloppy ending. On top of poor writing, most of the cast has all the personality of a cardboard cutout, aside from maybe two of them. 
and the standout character of the game is only seen for one mission, with the rest spent on a police force that is as milk toast as the plot developments are predictable. The worst offender is our main character, who the game desperately tries to make look cool in cinematics, but I feel hard pressed to get invested in the plight of them or their family and comrades, because they barely even have a character at all. They never speak, only offering awkward grunts and moments that would be ideal for our main character to show any sort of character at all. It's rather frustrating seeing this in motion, as it's plainly obvious where dialogue should be, but the words are absent. Perhaps the most important thing a story needs is an engaging protagonist, one the player can relate to, enjoy being around, or at least find interesting. This is especially vital in sci-fi as it helps to anchor the audience in an alien and distant world, a viewpoint that is understandable and helps ground the rest of the work. But Astral Chain's viewpoint is from the perspective of an unemotive demigod. It's very hard to relate, and it's very hard to relish in the standard action game power fantasy Astral Chain attempts to have, as you don't really have anyone to root for beyond a husk of a main character. Speaking of power fantasy, the game has a super mode, just like every other action game, called Fusion. It's powered by this bar at the bottom of your health, it's filled by performing sync moves, you click the left and right stick to activate it, and you fuse with your legion. And you get it just before the final mission. It's beyond useless. Sure, it's very powerful, but due to how slowly it fills up, it can usually only be used once per mission. To put that into perspective, missions can be up to three hours long. That's how long it takes to build up. It's basically just there to be used during a story moment where it has infinite energy, and it's completely useless in regular gameplay. It's so poorly integrated into the combat that I've barely used it. Seriously, if it just filled up like twice as fast, it would actually be useful. This game bends over backwards to facilitate a story that's barely worth experiencing at all. It's also hard to take the game seriously when it's probably one of the easiest action games I've ever played. While the game has a steep learning curve at first, by 10 hours in, I had become pretty accustomed to it and found most of the game's difficulty had come from just plain obtuseness. When you strip away the unorthodox mechanics and controls, combat is so simple and rudimentary that there's really not much variety to enemy encounters. and often felt like I was mashing my way through hordes of enemies with not much thought. The game also doesn't shy away from throwing a lot of enemies at you, attempting to compensate for the player having two controllable characters, which often makes combat feel exhausting. Seriously, it feels like most enemies have mini-boss levels of health. It takes forever for them to go down. Worst of all is the game's camera, which constantly gets stuck on walls and oftentimes obscures the entirety of the action. This is probably the worst camera I've seen in a game since... Metal Gear Rising. Oh no. The ranking system is very forgiving, and it feels like it does not punish taking damage or even dying at all. I died 10 times to the game's final encounter, and walked out with the highest ranking. It feels like all that matters for getting a high ranking is just swapping legions constantly and spamming inputs to trigger more sync moves. It really doesn't make me feel like I'm doing better at all, and conversely makes the rank feel less earned. I can barely tell the difference between when the game tells me I did well and when it tells me I did not. I understand the thought process here. The designers want the player using more of their toolsets, but the game could have encouraged such play with much smarter design. Had the separate legions actually been put to more use beyond a few exceptions, perhaps with some of them being better at fighting certain enemies than others, combat would have been much more engaging. Some legions like the Bow Legion rarely get much use at all outside of environmental puzzles, and the Beast and Arm Legions are just plain outclassed by others. Giving them the edge on specific enemies would have gone a long way to encourage using them more. Even adding more direct control and perhaps having more unison moves like swords, blade mode, and bows, bow mode 
would help make the legions feel less disposable. But how would we even go about adding these mechanics? Astral Chain's control layout is packed. Combat is done with the bumpers and triggers to free up your right thumb to be able to move your legion around, which I understand in concept. In execution, due to the janky camera, it often ends up being incredibly clunky. The controls in Astral Chain feel unwieldy and badly utilized at times. Buttons like A and X are relegated to context-sensitive actions on the default control scheme, and I couldn't help but feel it would be better spent putting them elsewhere. I understand A is the be-all, end-all, context-sensitive button, it's been like that for a long time and for good reason, but did items absolutely have to be on the face? Why do we need items, too? Combat items like drones are barely useful. The finishers offer a full heal, making restoration items redundant. The only one of worth is the AED charge, which restores your extra lives. This could be integrated naturally without the need for items, by having them smartly placed around levels and automatically stockpiled. A bit like... another game. Really write these things down, guys. Why do we need two D-pad buttons for changing weapons when one is enough? B could have been used for jumping and would execute dodges with directional inputs when locked onto an enemy which is the action game standard. The game would have also been greatly improved if the lock-on was on a bumper instead of the right stick. This would facilitate being able to quickly press it and target and untarget something if needed, rather than having to stop moving your legion to click the stick to trigger and remove the lock-on. It feels so weird having an action game in 2019 without customizable inputs. Instead, we have controlled presets, which are fine in theory, but in this game they're useless, as even with them, there is no ideal setup. Worse still, control presets C and D map attack to the face, which does not allow the player to attack and guide the legion at the same time, adding an extra problem on top of all the other issues. Simply being able to switch around the current actions to whatever the player is comfortable with would improve the feel of the game tremendously. When it comes down to it, Astral Chain is not a bad game. It has solid craftsmanship and interesting ideas, and I enjoyed parts of it. I enjoyed Mission 6, after the stealth sections. But as a whole, Astral Chain does not feel like it lives up to the pedigree of its developers, and is severely lacking polish. While I don't like every Platinum game, most of that comes down to personal taste. They've almost always made quality games. Astral Chain is the first major game from them in a while that I felt was severely lacking in so many areas. The developers have said they wanted to make a series out of Astral Chain, and given the success of the game, it will probably happen. I hope they can improve upon the foundation they set with the first, and polish up the experience. Because there's potential here. It just needs the right focus to shine. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching all the way through this video. I'm sure it's going to be very long when I edit it down. Unless you skip to the end expecting a review score, in which case, uh, sorry, I don't do that. Thank you to all of our patrons here at Source Gaming uh, for funding us. Because what I do is hard work. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, or even if you just found it reasonable enough, please do share it around. Criticism tends to get snuffed out and disregarded, and while I understand wanting to like something that you love, and I don't want you to not like something that you love, I feel it's necessary to talk about things that can be improved too. Otherwise, the developers will never get the feedback they need to make better games. And thank you in particular to uh, Kaylee Hollins, who did the audio mixing for this video. This wouldn't have been possible without her. Seriously. She's a saint. Links to her and all of our stuff can be found in the description below. Please check it out. Until the next video, I leave you. Goodbye. Adieu. Hopefully I don't go insane before I finish editing this.